Have you had a chance to see Apple's 27-inch 5K iMac Retina display? I sure have, and it's just beautiful. This is Tom Parrish, and up next is an analysis by Dave Abrams to better understand how well this display performs from an analytical perspective. So Tom, well, we had a number of clients contacting us, a large number of clients contacting us about the new Apple Retina 5K iMac. They essentially wanted to know how good is this display? You know, oh, it's the, it's the next generation display. It's from Apple. Apple may, usually makes quality products. How good is this display? Is it good enough to do visual effects on? Is it good enough to work in Photoshop? And is it good enough to QC uh, content on without having that external monitor? Can we put this at our artist workstations, editor workstations throughout our facilities? And since we were getting so much traction with that, we, we wanted to make it our goal to find one and really get some one-on-one -on -one time in a dark room where we can measure it and quantify how, how good the color reproduction is, how, how good is the display from a color accuracy standpoint. Obviously, we could go into how, how good is the graphics card and, and what is that capable of. And for the purposes of this podcast and for the purposes of our review, we decided to simply focus on the, the color accuracy of the display, the gamma, the color gamut, uh, those type of things. And uh, our, our system was essentially the photo research spectral radiometer that we use uh, for the majority of our calibrations, as well as some CalMAN software to quantify and plot the data, which is what we have in our charts. And uh, we ended up having to use a couple different software programs in order to actually get this thing dialed in uh, to where we wanted it. And we still didn't quite get perfect with it, but we'll go over these reports and uh, hopefully everyone will have a better understanding of how good the display is and if it will, will meet their needs. What was the particular iMac configuration and how did you set it up to run the tests? Well, Tom, the very first thing we did we set up our gear in a very dark room. We had the iMac and just for everyone's knowledge, it was an iMac Retina 5K running OS 1010.1 Yosemite. It had the 32 gigs of memory, 1600 megahertz DDR3 memory, an AMD Radeon R9M295X with um, four gigabytes of memory. And the very first thing we wanted to do was just see out of the box how accurate is the iMac. So we wanted to see how accurate the iMac was in its default setting. So we were in the default profile of iMac. The auto brightness was on. That's how Apple ships it. That's how we had it. We wanted to just leave it just how it was. We lit the display warm up for about 30 to 45 minutes. Now the display had been used before this computer has been used. So the display wasn't just fresh out of the box, but we did do a reset and it was a fresh version of OS X Yosemite that had not been set up yet. Okay, let's start with the sRGB gamut. How did it perform? So we started with the display profile iMac and we started with the auto brightness on. From there, we wanted to target the sRGB profile because that's what computers are often targeting. That is the most well-known computer standard for general computing. So we said, okay, we're gonna start with this sRGB profile. And if you look at our pre-calibration on the sRGB report, you'll notice it was going a little green on the CIE 1931 Y axis. It was approximately 335 most of the way out instead of the 329 target. So it was going a little green. The X was miraculously very close. It was right around 313 throughout the entire range. However, what you'll notice is the gamma is not quite tracking what sRGB would be tracking. Now, our measurements were set up for zero to 255 full range computer video, not the legal you know, SMPTE range video that a lot of people might be using if they're looking at a broadcast monitor. But when you're working in the computer domain, you're working on software, you know, that software is mostly designed for that full range video. So that's where we were making our measurements so everyone knows where we are with that. And what we noticed is the gamma was closer to an approximate 2.3 gamma. It wasn't, it wasn't tailing off the bottom end like sRGB specifies. It was mostly right around that 2.3 all the way throughout. So it wasn't even that you know, 1886, 2.4-ish uh, curve. It was, it was sort of a little in between. And, uh, but, but again, the grayscale, not terrible out of the, out of the box other than that gamma tracking not being uh, quite where you want it. Okay, how about the CIE chart and the performance at different saturation points? 
As we move down to our CIE charts, you'll look at once again at the pre-calibration. Now we measure 25% saturation, so we just wanted to see a little more than just, you know, is it hitting the 100% the saturation? And what we found was for the most part, it was fairly good and um, not, not too terrible, not too far off from sRGB if you look at the chart here. Now you'll see there's some 50%, 75%, and even some 100% saturation error. Um, that can be attributed slightly to that gamma curve. So if the gamma was more accurate, those, those luminance values may fall closer into place and actually bring it in tighter. But what you'll notice is most of the colors are on axis, they're lined up, the hue is not, not really far off or anything like that. So, you know, again, this monitor out of the box in that default iMac profile, not doing too poorly, not perfect, but not doing too poorly. We've certainly seen many, many, many monitors out of the box that are way, way further off than, than this one. All right, color checker. For the color checker, you'll notice, again, not terrible. Um, it's probably, it says it's a, a max delta E of approximately 4.2 with an average delta E of 2.6. Um, so again, very, very close in that iMac profile out of the box. Okay, so you covered the Apple custom iMac profile that's right there out of the box. How about the performance of the standard sRGB profile? Any difference? We went and we measured the post calibration data on this report and in that post calibration data, we actually didn't do a calibration. We simply switched to the sRGB profile built into the Mac. So we said, okay, we're gonna leave our auto brightness on. We're gonna to go to sRGB now. We're gonna go away from Apple's custom iMac profile. And we're gonna measure this sRGB and we wanna see how good this sRGB profile is. You'll notice it's pretty much identical to that iMac profile. So there's really no, no major difference between that iMac profile and that sRGB profile that comes with the Mac stock. So again, not perfect. Most of the error seems to be on the gamma. What I believe they're doing is they're trying to make this, this display look contrasty, look rich, have, have these saturated colors, um, have this look of, of, of this sense of depth, right? There's no real depth in a 2D image when you're looking at a display like this, but that sense of depth, that sense of contrast that a lot of other displays don't have. And I think they're, they're achieving some of that by going with a more 2.3 gamma curve and not coming out of black as fast as that standard sRGB profile would, would require you to. And that gives you some of that Apple look and that, that impressiveness of the display when you take that first glance at it. Okay, Dave, one final thing. If you want to use the 5K iMac Retina display on content that has a wider color gamut, how well did it perform or could it perform? So one other thing that we were able to look at while we were there, we wanted to see how wide can the display go? How big can the color gamut get? And you know, there are people that are working in larger color gamuts. There are people that are working in things like Adobe RGB and they wanna know, will this hit Adobe RGB? Unfortunately, we did measure the Adobe RGB. We did measure the Apple RGB profiles and they are, they are the same, just like the sRGB and the iMac profile. And the display is not capable of hitting it. It is grossly undersaturated when it comes to that. What happens is it starts to move towards towards that 100% saturation. And then what happens is the 75% and the 100% saturation are almost the exact same thing as it tries to make it look like the wider gamut. And you can see that in our in our report on that if you happen to take a look at it. But ultimately, you know, this display was geared towards general computer usage. General computer usage is sRGB and that is what they were targeting. And they, you know, out of the box, again, they're, they're very close, the biggest, the biggest offense is that gamma. That gamma is not right. That gamma is arbitrary. It's not really based on any standard. Uh, we verified that in, um, you know, with our tests, we were able to verify that that gamma is incorrect. And if they were to ship it with a closer gamma, if they were to improve their profile and ship it with a gamma that is closer to sRGB, this display would be almost, almost not require calibration out of the box other than for those perfectionists that wanna make it perfect because obviously there are parts tolerances, there are gonna to be tolerances off the assembly line, there are gonna be tolerances in shipping and over time, you know, you're gonna to wanna to have this calibrated as the display breaks in, as the display gets more hours, just like any display, it still is an LCD display and it still will require recalibration after every so many hours. Um, just like we talked about in our, in our how often should I calibrate my display podcast. 
So that, that still will be something that will need to be done over time. All right, so you created a 1D corrective LUT using the x rite software. Tell us more about that process and how you know for sure the resulting correction correlates to the standard you're aiming at. How we calibrated it? Well, you know, there are several methods of calibrating. You know, Apple has their built-in sort of use your eyeball and go through this general calibration method. We decided not to do that. We've we've played with that in the past and it ultimately doesn't give us the amount of adjustability that we would like to do. It's more for a prosumer uh, environment where you don't have any tools to use. Um, so what we, we started doing is we were using our CalMAN software, which we, we use most of the time for a lot of our calibrations. Unfortunately though, SpectraCal's CalMAN Client 3 software, which is what would allow you to create an ICC profile for a computer like this, and you can customize your 1D LUT there for the computer. Unfortunately, that software is currently incompatible with OS X Yosemite. We spent a lot of time trying to make it work. We spent a lot of time talking to support, but unfortunately they are currently not supporting Yosemite. They're telling us they're working on it. It's coming. There's a fix coming down the road. There's no ETA on that yet. Um, but currently the CalMAN software is not working. So we've wanted to actually try to use Light Illusion, the Lightspace software, but we ran out of time. We weren't going to have the amount of time that we, we need to do to go really through a proper Lightspace calibration because we only had this room so long until essentially the, the uh, place letting us uh, measure it closed for the day. And we decided, well, let's go to x -Rite. You know, x -Rite, well known for computer calibration software. We've worked with their tools before. Let's try their profiler and let's see if we can make this work. And sure enough, x -Rite has a tool that does work that will allow you to calibrate in OS X Yosemite and create a custom ICC profile utilizing a 1D LUT and uh, track that gamma curve and track that grayscale and get some of these things dialed in. So that's what we ended up using. The difficulty in using something like the X-Rite software is X-Rite software only works with X-Rite meters. And X-Rite meters are not necessarily the industry reference or the standard when you're talking about Hollywood post-production calibration. So what we end up doing is we end up doing an iterative calibration process. First, we, we set our targets. These are our goals. We want sRGB. We want this this gamma curve, we want uh, this amount of light output, we want these these uh, 10 pieces of criteria, let's say, to hit here. And then we tell it, run through the process. Let's run through our process and let's create this custom ICC calibrated file for this, this Retina iMac display. Then we test it. Then we put up test patterns and we measure it with our photo research and we plot the data. And again, we were plotting the data here in SpectraCal's CalMAN software. And we look at how good it comes out and, you know, Every time I've used the x rite software, it never comes out perfect the first time when you're trying to correlate their tool to the photo research tool. But if you go back and forth and you kind of tweak your target file and you tweak um, all, the, all the parameters, you can create a correlation between their meter, your meter, and what you want to achieve. And that's essentially what we did. We did this iterative process of, okay, well, we, we tell the x rite software, go calibrate. And then that's the, the biggest problem with some of these software tools is they go, they calibrate, and they tell you it's calibrated. And then you just need to believe it. You just need to say, okay, I mean, I have no way to verify this. I went through the process. It went through it. It says it's done. It says it's great. If you hit verification with the same tool, the same tool is ultimately going to say you're great. But um, what we like to do is we like to use our own test patterns uh, one way or another, and we like to use a, a meter we know one way or another and, and take it outside of what that tool is doing and also verify it. If we can correlate that, then we know, okay, we're good. So we tweak that setting and then we took that uh you know after a couple times of doing that we finally got what you see here in our post calibrated srgb uh, calibrated document here where we were able to get the saturation levels you know pretty much dialed in we were able to get our uh, grayscale gamma uh, very 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 close throughout i mean i think most people would look at this and say wow that's very good for a computer monitor you know especially like an imac that's built into the computer um, and, and a Retina 5K display, no less. And you'll look at the color checker, and again, the color checkers, less, you know, the max delta E I think we had is 2.1, and the average delta E is 0.8. Um, you know, again, very, very close. And if you look at our color comparator at the bottom there, you'll notice it's extremely hard to see the difference between uh, most of the colors there that aren't quite perfect because they are so close. But in summary, you know, excellent display, will hit sRGB, 
can be calibrated utilizing x rite software right now. You'll want to correlate that with a high quality meter to make sure you're getting it just right. Um, and in the future, you'll be able to use tools like SpectraCal's CalMan and of course, Light Illusion's LightSpace.